Look, Dwayne Wade's part of the Cleveland Cavaliers. He's teamed up with LeBron James and the rest of the crew, but the ultimate goal is to win a championship, and are they good enough to win a championship? Hell yeah, this team is stacked. These guys are real good. Now, Isaiah Thomas, he's injured at the moment, so Derrick Rose will be the starting point guard, which leads a few questions there because neither Rose or Wade are good, you know, shooters. But does that mean much when you can consider J.R. Smith and Kyle Korver coming off the bench if they need some shooters? I don't think it really makes a difference. So if that's your reason for why Cleveland will not be a championship contending team, then that's pointless. Yes, Wade and Rose aren't incredible shooters, but I don't know how much of a difference that really makes when you can just bring Kyle Korver or J.R. Smith on. I just don't see that being a huge problem. And then when Isaiah Thomas comes back, you've got a different story. So the team pretty much follows this. You got Isaiah Thomas, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Kevin Love, and Tristan Thompson. Off the bench though is where it gets interesting. Derrick Rose, J.R. Smith, Kyle Korver, Jay Crowder, Jeff Green, Fry. I mean that team is honestly stacked. That's good enough to compete up against the Golden State Warriors and seriously compete for a championship this season. Now, it's pretty funny because eight months ago, I made a video on my channel saying what if Dwayne Wade and LeBron James went to Chicago and played with the prime Derrick Rose, which could have actually happened in the summer of 2010. Now we are seeing these guys play together, and obviously they're not in their prime, but Dwayne Wade is still a really good player. I felt like Derrick Rose was still very underrated last season, and he wasn't enjoying his basketball in New York. I just think New York as a whole was just not a great place for Melo or Derrick Rose to play last season, so I think you'll actually see an improvement in both those guys. But Dwayne Wade, he knows how to play. He Obviously, his prime is in the past. He's definitely not in his prime, but... He's a Hall of Fame player. He's been to the finals before. He's a three-time NBA champion, 12-time All-Star, eight member of the All-NBA team. But Derrick Rose was fourth in the league for driving inside and finishing last season in New York. So I do think that both of those guys, there are questions about their jump shot, but I think that they can honestly make it work. And especially when Isaiah Thomas comes back, then you've just got a stat team. You've got Isaiah Thomas, an All-Star, Dwayne Wade, Past his prime, but as I mentioned, he's still a very, very good player. Then you've got LeBron James, arguably the best player of all time. At the four, you've got Kevin Love, an all-star again. Tristan Thompson, I mean, that's where it gets interesting. But you know what else makes this Cleveland Cavaliers team scary? And no one's talking about this. They still have a 2018 first-round pick from the Brooklyn Nets. They can trade that pick and get another all-star caliber player for, for that pick alone. Now, that may be during the trade deadline. If the Cleveland Cavaliers aren't performing, you may see a Jay Crowder, Kevin Love, 2018 pick for a star player or something like that. It could be really interesting because not only do they have the depth, but that first round pick is something else. And you may never know. If the Pelicans don't produce, DeMarcus Cousins may be on the trade block. Anthony Davis may be on the trade block. You may see that pick be really, really valuable in the next coming months. Another thing is, don't be surprised if the Cleveland Cavaliers limit Dwayne Wade's minutes, maybe some games he come off the bench, because just like LeBron James last year, they want to keep players like Dwayne Wade, and because they do have a veteran team, they want to keep him fresh for the playoffs. Because let's be honest here, in the terrible Eastern Conference that they're in, they can literally run their bench and possibly still beat some of the starters in the Eastern Conference that they're going to match up against. Chicago. Brooklyn. Like, don't be surprised if Cleveland just runs out with their bench and still beats them because their bench is stacked. But not only that, they do just want to rest their players because they're, they're in a win-now mentality, and that's quite obvious. I don't think they have a very young player on their team, apart from maybe Kay Felder, who may never even get a minute. So their team is just seriously there to win. And so don't be surprised if you'll see... Dwayne Wade on the bench for some games, Derrick Rose on the bench for some games, Kevin Love, he'll, he may be the one guy that just plays the whole season, just maybe some games he gets a few less minutes, but majority of the games he does just play normally, because when you think about it, this team is just here to win and just wait until the playoffs. If they could choose to go to the playoffs right now, I think they would do it, because they're in the Eastern Conference, there's no way I don't think that they're not making the playoffs, and then once they're just facing up against the Golden State Warriors, they need to be fresh, because that's something the Warriors don't have because the Warriors being in the Western Conference they don't have that ability to just sit out their starters a few games I think we can all agree on that because their bench number one isn't as good 
Second of all, they're just in a way better conference with now Oklahoma with Paul George, Russell Westbrook, Carmelo Anthony, the Houston Rockets, James Harden, and Chris Paul. I mean, it's just been an insane offseason. We've seen Jimmy Butler head to the Timberwolves as well. So all I'm saying is life has not been made easy for the Golden State Warriors this season. And as for Cleveland, they're in a very, very, very strong chance to push the Golden State Warriors and actually win an NBA championship this season. But I do want to say this. I have heard a lot of people not criticize the move of the Cleveland Cavaliers getting Dwayne Wade because there's no criticism to get a good player like Wade. But there have been some questions surrounding Dwayne Wade and his productivity. And I do want to say, in Chicago last season, there was a lot of dysfunction. And Wade still played 60 games. He is 35 years old. Keep that in mind. He averaged 18.3 points per game, 4.5 rebounds, 4 assists, 1.5 steals, 0.7 blocks on 43% shooting. And obviously he doesn't have the athleticism that made him a superstar, but he is still really, really good. And obviously that mindset to still play is there. And the basketball IQ is just something that he'll always have. So when you actually think about what he did last season, and now you in turn just replace a couple of his teammates with LeBron James, Kevin Love, Isaiah Thomas, I think you're going to do a lot better out of Dwayne Wade. I don't mean his stats will be a lot better, but I think efficiency-wise, he'll be a lot better. And I think overall, he'll just be in a happier place competing for a championship because ultimately, that's what most players in the NBA are here to do. He's definitely not in it for the money at this point. We saw the buyout contract with Cleveland. He still gets paid from Chicago, but he's trying to get that chip, and we all know that. Lastly, what intrigues me about the move to get Dwayne Wade is simply the fact that this team can run so many different types of lineups. If they need a shooting lineup, they can put Fry, Korver, J.R. Smith in that lineup. If they need a driving lineup, they got Rose, Wade, LeBron, still an insane lineup. If they want to go small, they can have LeBron James at the 4 or even Jay Crowder at the 4. Carl Corver at the 3, Wade at the 2, whoever at the 1. Like, this team can go small at any point. They can go tall. You've still got Tristan Thompson, Kevin Love, LeBron James, who's six foot eight monster. Then you can run Kyle Corver at the 2 and have Dwayne Wade at the 1. Like, any lineup you want, this team has it, which is insane, and that's why their depth is just in ridiculous. Like, they can literally run any type of lineup with who they have, and they're still always going to be in that ring for a championship. Now, obviously, there is some risk for the Cleveland Cavaliers signing Dwayne Wade, but that risk is like a 0.001% for Dwayne Wade. I mean, when you think about it, the worst case for Dwayne Wade is that he looks like Darren Williams did for Cleveland last season. And we know how bad Darren Williams was for Cleveland. So I don't think any player could be as that bad. But in saying that, Darren Williams was a former All-Star before he was actually traded to Cleveland. But the thing is though, even if he somehow does turn out like Darren Williams, which I definitely don't think he will, Cleveland has that great depth that it wouldn't even matter because they know that they made the mistake of keeping Darren Williams on the court before. And for Dwayne Wade, he will be the one that he just knows. He can go off the bench. He can start. Dwayne Wade is that good that there's just no way he's going to turn out like Darren Williams. But if there is, don't be surprised if he just knows that time's up. And the thing is, I want to say as well, don't be surprised if once the playoff starts, Dwayne Wade turns into some games of his former self. We've seen it with veterans in the past. Gary Payton, when he went back to Miami and won a ring, he turned into old Gary Payton as he was in Seattle. It just happens sometimes. Players in their playoff mode, they go insane and they turn into their former selves for one or two games. We've seen it with Alonso Mourning. I know most of the Miami Heat old guys just because I watch Miami, but it happens to every single team eventually. Some of the veteran guys, even if they pass their prime, they step up during the playoffs, and I can just definitely see that happening with Dwayne Wade. Don't be surprised if there's some magic still left in those knees. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know how you think the Dwayne Wade to Cleveland Cavaliers situation will work out. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely hit that subscribe button for more NBA content every few days. If you guys could leave a like as well, I'd really, really, really appreciate it if you guys could drop a like. And go check out the new website, nicksmithmerch.com. Get your Nick Smith merch, NBA merch, whatever you guys want. It's on the store. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. I'm out. Peace.